Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to cover something called hyperparameter tuning or also called optimization to try and squeeze every extra percent of accuracy that we can out of a machine learning model. And if you're getting really bad results, try and fix what's, uh, what's going on there and optimize it quite a bit, okay? So let's get started. From tensorflow.curious.datasets, we will import MNIST. So we're using the classic MNIST handwritten digits data set, and we will get X train and Y train. This is our input matrix. This is our output. Uh, each of these 60,000 things right here, 60,000, they are all numbers from zero to nine. So we're trying to predict what each of these 28 by 28 images are, what handwritten digit they are. So 60,000, 60,000. Here, each of these inputs are a picture, and they have a corresponding output from zero to nine on what digit they are. This one, as you see, X train zero here, that would be labeled a five. And so Y train sub zero, that would be a five. We have the same thing for X test and Y test. That is 10,000 examples and 10,000 outputs as well. Okay, so jumping right into the machine learning model, I'm uh, assuming that you've kind of built machine learning models before and hopefully you're somewhat familiar with MNIST itself. So from tensorflow.curious.optimizers, we will import the atom optimizer. That in itself actually is a hyperparameter because, you know, this is optimizers. There's multiple choices here. But I will say that me personally and a lot of people, they just kind of use atom as the default and they don't play around too much with them. But that's something you can use. Learning rate, this is something that is huge to adjust for Adam. It means how quickly the model is going to learn. And you can't just you can't just set it to like this massive value, otherwise it will not learn properly. And we will see that we'll, we'll play around with that. So base model, this is model one, is just from tensorflow.keras import layers. From tensorflow.keras.models, we will import a sequential model. And we're gonna make a base model, model one, with an input that takes in a 28 by 28 image. It's going to do a lambda, which just divides each of the values by 255. Uh, we are going to flatten it because it's uh, it's 28 by 28 now. We flatten that into, uh, it'll actually be 784, which that's 28 times 28. And then we just convert that to 10 nodes at the end, which is it creates a soft max output, okay? So this is pretty standard. This is pretty much the simplest uh, deep learning model that you can make for, I'm not even sure if it classifies as deep learning because it's just converting this 784 into, uh, into 10 nodes here. It's really more of a, an extension on logistic regression, but it doesn't matter. Compile this model with, uh, with this optimizer, this atom optimizer on 0.001 and loss is sparse categorical cross entropy. We will not be changing this. This is not considered a hyperparameter. This is just the correct loss function for the problem. Uh, metrics, we are going to use just accuracy. You can kind of argue that uh, different metrics or, or hyperparameters, they're not something you can tune, uh, but they're different things that you can look at to consider uh, what models are better than others. It's really up to you, uh, but we're just gonna use accuracy. We're going to do model1.fit, where x is x train, y is y train, and we're going to make the validation data x test and y test. And for now, we are just going to do 10 epochs. So here are our results. We can see here this accuracy is the accuracy on the training set. We do not care about it too much in terms of model performance, but we do care about it to, to look at the difference between the training accuracy and the validation accuracy. And uh, it's a little bit weird at first that this training accuracy is lower than the validation because generally you would think that, um, like if it's training on this data, uh, you'd think it's better at learning, it's better at predicting on the training set itself, uh, but sometimes that's not true. It actually was better here. But anyways, uh, if we go up a few epochs, we will just see really the end and that it caps out at about 93% accuracy on the training set and just a little bit worse on the test set. So what does this mean? Well, what this means is that uh, it can predict on unseen data, so validation is unseen data, uh, about as well as it can on the test set, which means that we should, we should safely be able to add more parameters to our model, add complexity to our deep learning model, and that's not unsurprising given that I kind of described this as pretty much just an extension on, on logistic regression. It's a very, very simple model here that just has 10 nodes. So we will add uh, parameters. We keep the exact same optimizer. This, I'm calling it opt2, but it's the same one. We make model two, which is the same one, except after the flatten, we are going to add 32 ReLUs. This itself, this activation is a hyperparameter. You can tune that. Um, this number here, 32, that's a hyperparameter. You can tune that, uh, but I chose 10 there and let's see how that does. So here's our accuracy. We get up to uh, looking just at the end here, 97% accuracy on the training set. And again, 
uh, pretty much the same, 97% on the validation, okay? So that was a big improvement. We got from uh, about 93s to about 97s, so that's much better. Uh, we will try, one thing you could try, which we will soon, is to add even more parameters. But for now, we are going to try increasing the learning rate. Let's see what happens if we were to increase the learning rate. Well, you see, it went way up here, or it went way down. The accuracy went way down on both of them. That's because we changed the learning rate to 0.1. That is a that is 100 times bigger than what it used to be. It was at 0.001, and then we changed it to 0.1. It uh, it just couldn't figure it out. So this is, uh, it just, it's just bouncing back and forth, and it's never finding a, a local minimum, basically. Something else we can try is decreasing the learning rate. So if I do something very, very small like this, and we try to train model three, take a look at what happens. It's stuck at 11% and we are already through pretty much the first epoch. Okay, after the first epoch, we we're only at 11% compared to 90% on the first epoch for the other learning rate. It is going so, so, so slowly. And to be honest, it probably will uh, get to be either a better model than, uh, than this previous one, or at least the same. It'll probably turn out to be about the same, but it's gonna take so long to do that. Like, look, it's going uh, 30, 1135, 1157, 1176, uh, 12. Of course, Greg, can you just increase it a little bit? Yeah, I can increase it. I'll increase it by 100 times, and we can see what happens if we do that. Now what happens is, sorry, it's, there we go. Uh, so it's going a lot faster now, this is much better, but you can still see this is a lot slower than it was for the other ones. Uh, it got to 90% in the first one, now it got to 37% uh, on the first one here. So this is not amazing, uh, but it's a, this actually seems like a decent learning rate to be honest. I am going to stop that and so we can progress to the next one. Okay, so this one is greatly add the number of parameters because as we saw uh, two ones ago, we were stuck at 97 is pretty much 98% and 97%. Let's try greatly adding the number of parameters. So uh, we're gonna stick with that same learning rate that we found before at 0.001. And the only thing we're gonna do here is we're, we're gonna change, add 128 ReLUs, add 128 ReLUs, add 128 ReLUs and see how that does. Well, here's the output right here. And we got up to 99% on the training set and 98% on the test set. Okay, so we pretty much uh, we pretty much overfit at this point, meaning that we almost directly memorized the training set, but still the validation accuracy is pretty darn good. What can we try and do about that? Well, of course we can try and decrease the number of nodes that we had. We could have just we could put this down, maybe take away 128 of them, and see how that worked to perform. It would do okay. Uh, we can actually, I'll choose to check back up on that later and see how that one does. Something else you can try is, which is very common, especially if you're doing a computer vision models, which this is kind of a computer vision application. Uh, we are going to add two things, regularizers, which is uh, we're gonna import L2. There's also L1 and probably others, although it's usually L1 and L2. Uh, and for these, you can specify L2 uh, has some parameter here, usually called a lambda. Uh, this is just some value, which the, the bigger this value is, um, the more strain it's putting on these nodes. So we attach it as a kernel regularizer to these 128 uh, dense nodes, okay? Uh, there's also probably a bias regularizer as well, but kernel is uh, is probably fine as is. So we are adding this L2 of 0 0.001. That means it's slightly driving uh, all the parameters associated with this towards zero. It's it's driving the parameters towards zero values or the weights towards zero values, um, which effectively uh, decreases the complexity of the model because if you think about a linear regression if you have a really big coefficient like a big coefficient of like seven um, that means there's a really strong relationship uh, on this beta variable it's the same thing here and if you were to drive that variable closer from seven down towards zero it effectively decreases the complexity of the model something else that is very common especially in computer vision applications is to uh, do something called dropout where this this value is actually a probability and it says okay uh, a five percent chance this is 0 0.05 we're adding a five percent chance that any of these nodes were to drop out which literally means we make them zero valued only in training uh, you would definitely not do this when you're actually performing inference on the model uh, because it would perform not very good 
as you can see here, uh, the accuracy on the train is much worse than the validation on the accuracy, especially early on, largely because of that dropout issue. Okay, um, so those are two things you can do to try and reduce uh, overfitting, which is dropout and uh, and kernel regularization. You can play around with this value, try to make it bigger. You can try to play uh, play around with this value, make it bigger, and also just decrease uh, decrease or add these these dense nodes in general. Okay, so if we see how it did, we got uh, about 96.81 and 96.71 uh, on training and validation. Okay, so uh, it did actually just a little bit uh, a little bit worse on train, which we don't care about, um, but it did a little bit worse on validation as well. We got uh, a max of 97.88 over here, which is um, you know not a huge difference, but it is it is definitely a noticeable difference. So uh, one thing that we could try right away is just to increase the number of epochs. And notice how I'm writing this model five here. Um, I just I had model five here before. If I just write the model fit, that is effectively going to uh, start this off at epoch one at the end of this epoch here. So it has it keeps the weight values what they are here. Hence the accuracies are very very close to each other. You know, close to close to this. If we let it run for another ten epochs, we can see it does a little bit better. Uh, 9730, 9742. It still never uh, quite approaches what it used to be. At, uh, at 9787 back here for model four, but it was pretty close, okay? Now the last thing I wanna do is just switch back to, oh, I think I, oh yeah, that's the one I cut off. Uh, the one I wrote here, I actually forget. Yeah, so this one right here, I dropped off a 128 and we can see, oh, that was model four. Yeah, so we got 9788 um, and I forget how compared to the other one, but you can you can see that back if you scroll back in the, in the video, okay? So hopefully this helped you, uh, helped understand uh, some ways to hyper tune hyper parameters. So just as a recap, um, the different methods we covered were so looking at the learning rate, we saw that. Um, but first, we started this baseline model, which is always a good idea to just get something that makes perfect sense, just a very simple um, getting the input and then converting that to 10 uh, softmax nodes, that makes sense. Uh, we can add the number of parameters or decrease the number of parameters. We can increase or decrease the learning rate based off of um, whether it's training too fast or training too slow. Uh, we can like really, really add the number of parameters, like so 128, 128. It's never a bad idea to see what happens there. And, uh, and regularization and dropout are very common ways to combat the overfitting issue. Uh, and also just changing the number of epochs is, is a common way uh, to see the whole lifespan of the model, what it can really turn into, just to let it rip and, uh, and see how far it goes. So uh, if this was helpful, I'd appreciate you dropping a like if you don't mind. And uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time, guys.